Welcome to the Money and Wealth Show. Brought to you this week by AmericanManganeseInc.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. This week, it's my privilege to be interviewing Tony Hepburn, the chairman of the board of Vancouver Financial House, Audlem Brown. Welcome. Thanks, Alex. Well, I should probably say thank you for hosting us in, in your boardroom. You, uh, you've got a very interesting history. You immigrated to Canada in 1960 from, from God's country, from Scotland, right. and, uh, and uh, as a CA, chartered accountant, and you settled right in, uh, in Montreal, I believe, That's right. uh, with Price Waterhouse. What, um, what, what made you choose the investment business, the investment services business? It's hard to say really, Alex. I just simply was attracted to the type of action in the, in the investment business. The uh, stock market uh, attracted me. It had a lot of appeal. So that is as simple as that. Simple as that? Mm. Interesting. Um, in the markets today, we see uh, Greece uh, uh, on the bubble, well not on the bubble, on the, on the absolute brink. Uh, with uh, we hear today uh, por Portugal possibly falling, or we've been hearing that for a while, uh, Ireland uh, to follow this domino effect. Um, Italy, France, Spain are all uh, seemingly suffering. Um, it, it's, it's very much the domino effect with the U.S. in a double-dip recession. Um, we're, we're also seeing more subprime homes coming on the market. Uh, in Southern California, um, where are we headed? What's really happening here? Are we are we just prolonging the agony? Well, that could be the case, certainly, as far as the eurozone is concerned. Uh, it could be a patchwork effort right now for Greece, uh, but there is a lot of uh, will and determination to hold the eurozone together, and Greece is part of it. The worst thing that could happen would be for Greece to be really capitulate, uh, declare bankruptcy, and leave the Eurozone. I think that would be really, that would be really serious. There you'd get the domino effect. If the Eurozone can manage to hold Greece together, and they're desperately trying to, and the London Economist thinks that a gradual restructuring of their debt would be the way to go, i.e. write off perhaps half, half of it. The banks already have probably uh, recognized a lot of these losses, so just crystallize them and get it over with. And of course, continue to have tax uh, increases, which Greece desperately needs, and uh, selling off certain uh, industries that are owned by the government. There's lots that can be done. It's not, you know, it's not the t a time to despair. It's a time to be extremely concerned, however. And right now, uh, Portugal and Ireland are the two that are most often mentioned uh, as possibly following, but um, that's by no means inevitable in my judgment. You think that Ireland and Portugal might be in better shape? Are they in, in better shape than, than Greece was, or, or do you think uh, they're in better shape and have taken measures since the, 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 the Greek collapse has, has, been, has been announced? Do you think they've been doing the right things since then to, to, to save themselves from the same peril? Well, they've, they've asked for help from, uh, from the Eurozone, of course, uh, both of them and that's uh, been a serious issue for them. But uh, I don't think that either Ireland or Portugal is quite as bad as Greece, but they are not to, not to downplay the, the seriousness of the situation in both these countries. And as you said earlier, Spain and, and Italy would be, would be even more serious. The three that we're talking about, Greece, Portugal, and Ireland could probably be handled with a lot of support from the Eurozone. But once you start talking about Spain and Italy and beyond that, that would be really disastrous. Spain, Italy and France uh, have a great deal of their paper held by the United States. So yes. it's, it's obvious what, what could happen. The, that same domino effect that I talked about earlier that so many others have, have, have referred to yeah. uh, could affect the United States. How much worse can it get for the U.S.? They're already in a double-dip recession. The, the, they're holding down their interest rate. 
how much worse can it get for them? Well, I would backtrack a little and say I, I wouldn't put France in that same category. France and Germany between them are the powerhouses, and particularly and, Germany, it's and, true, but France is uh, not in that bad And shape. better off. Yeah, but, oh, well, absolutely. I wouldn't put them in with France, uh, Spain and Italy by any means. But the U.S. that uh, you talk about, the U.S. is in a very serious situation looking at the longer term if they don't come to grips with it now. I think David Cameron in, in, in the United Kingdom has shown some leadership in the austerity program that Britain has implemented. President Obama has far deeper problems. The, the parliamentary democracies can do that type of thing, but uh, he's having real problems with the Congress, as we know. The debt ceiling is due to, uh, must be raised before August the 2nd. The Republicans uh, uh, see it politically in their interest, clearly, to make things awkward for President Obama. After all, there's an, an election coming up of course. in just a little over a year's time. Of course. So there are, there are, it's very unfortunate that politics is entering this matter. This is a time for bipartisanship, and it's not yet appeared in, in, in the U.S. Congress. The kind of bipartisanship that we're seeing here in this country. <laughs> I'm being well, we have I'm a majority government now. I'm being, I'm I'm being facetious, <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, I understand yeah. what you're saying. But in Britain, you've got a coalition, haven't you? Yes. And that seems to be working reasonably well, but with the usual problems, of course. Of course, absolutely. Let's take a bit of a break, and, and, and we'll, uh, we'll come back and talk a little bit more about what's happening here in Canada. Very good. We'll be right back. You're watching The Money and Wealth Show. American Manganese Inc. has a manganese deposit in Arizona. Indicated 6.7 billion pounds. Inferred 8.9 billion pounds. Potentially the lowest cost producer of electrolytic manganese. American Manganese Inc. has a projected cash cost of 44 cents a pound. The metal trades near $2 a pound. Do the math. Trading symbol AMY. Visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 604-531-9639. The Money and Wealth Show is archived online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. Welcome back. We're speaking with Tony Hepburn, the chairman of the board of Audlem Brown. During the break, you and I talked about how I referred to the American uh, economy as a double-dip recession, and you said that they're not quite there. Why? Absolutely not, because uh, th there are good signs in certain sectors of the economy that there is improvement. Employment numbers have been better in recent months. And uh, with the very weak dollar, the competitive position of the United States has improved enormously, obviously. So their trade balance is starting to so show some improvement. So I definitely don't think that the U.S. could be described as in a recession at this time, meaning a double dip because we're coming out of a recession. But certainly there is that risk. But with interest rates this low, there's still a lot of stimulus in the economy and that has been helping. E even though in the real estate sectors in Florida and Nevada, particularly in Arizona uh, and in, in Southern California, you could easily describe it as going into another uh, dip Absolutely. and making it a double dip. Those invest in property in these states and a few others certainly must feel that they're certainly still in a deep recession and, that, and it is a serious problem, Alex, but I don't believe the, it reflects in the whole economy. There are other better sectors that are showing some improvement. Very good. Um, what about Canada? Our, our, our dollar is, is pretty buoyant uh, as no. of late. We're, we're closing at uh, just above par or par with the uh, United States for some the U.S. dollar for some yes. time now. Um, our our interest rates are being held low. Mr. Flaherty, Flaherty is uh, is predicting uh, wine and roses very soon. I'm exaggerating <laughs> for for effect, but but uh, uh, certainly is our economic conservatism. Uh, saving us. Uh, we've got checks and balances that the United States clearly have never had. Is that, is that, is that why we've survived better than, than they have, even though our economy is, 
inextricably intertwined with theirs? Which it certainly is. They're mm -hmm. our biggest market, obviously. But yes, I think our uh, banking system, for example, survived the financial crisis of a couple of years ago extremely well because we have better regulation. That is generally conceded. Uh, and our bank shares have done extremely well, one, but they were not. They were very much affected by what happened in both Europe and the United States banking sectors. But I, I think that also our resource base in, in the type of economy that we've seen in the last two or three years has served us extremely well. That's certainly true out west. But it's also true for the rest of Canada. And uh, with China booming and uh, India emerging as a, as a major factor, uh, Canada's in a very strong position and that's been most helpful in the last two or three years. Are, uh, are our, is, is our business, uh, are our business interests uh, better suited for emerging markets like China and India? You talked about how we're, we're trading with, with, uh, with other partners, not just of course with the United States, but are we better suited because of that same uh, more conservative, not, and I don't mean conservative politically just because the government happens to be conservative, but, but a more conservative view. Uh, are, we, are we better suited to deal with those emerging economies because clearly they're, you know, India and China in particular mm. are, are booming. Uh, China, for example, as, as we, we've uh, discussed before, uh, holds a great deal of, of American paper. Are we better suited to, uh, because of what we've identified here as economic conservatism, are we better suited to handle those trade relationships? I think it's not so much better suited. We have the resources that these countries need. We have uh, we have plentiful supplies of uh, the base metals, for example, coal, uh, forest uh, products. Uh, we we just and so there's a lot of leverage in the Canadian economy, and that carries its own risks because if there's a big slowdown in China, for example, that would really affect our economy more than it would south of the border. Just recently, uh, I, I did a, 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 a blog post on my website about uh, the 60, reported 64 million empty units uh, in China, yes. in condo units, yeah. uh, which is a massive amount. They're apparently building 10 cities per year, mm. uh, and most of them are remaining empty. Yes. Um, with the influx of Asian investment uh, that's certainly driving the Vancouver uh, real estate market uh, and, and certainly uh, they're buying up great amounts of our lumber and coal. Um, just going back to what you said about what if, if there's a slowdown, how, how we might uh, uh, suffer. Do you see the possibility of that? I mean, if, 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 there's, a, if there's an issue uh, uh, such as that, uh, we could be in a, in a great deal of trouble. Do you do you actually see any signs of that at all? Just to pick up on that on that well, point, China has raised its interest rates quite significantly over the last twelve months, and there has been a, a slowdown in China. But of course, a slowdown for for them is still a very healthy rate of growth compared to what we have in the, in the West. And uh, I I would uh, feel that China will will forge ahead over the, with 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 some interruptions by all means. And clearly, the social unrest possibility in China could could be the most uh, serious risk I suppose but uh, they've got a country of such enormous population and there's so much catch up to do that I, I would have great confidence that any interruption will be short-lived interesting um, what about uh, if uh, that same Asian market uh, started to grow and grow and grow. Will a bubble burst here? It, it, uh, what I'm tr trying to get at here is, the, is there a, 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 an artificial nature to how much, for example, our local real estate market will, uh, will, will thrive? Are, mm. are, are those sort of red flags or, or, or sore points uh, that, that, that we might have to address at some point? Yeah, well, I think the property market is unique in that sense because, yes, the property market with the absence of foreign buyers, notably from, from the East, uh, could certainly have a serious impact but, uh, on, the, on that market. But demand for resources, which is really far more important to the overall economy of both British Columbia and Canada, would not necessarily be having the same effect. They may direct their property buying uh, south of the border, for example, where, as you uh, we decided, there's probably a lot of bargains there right now, probably. Absolutely. 
Very good. Let's take another break and then we'll come back and get a little BC centric. Right. We'll be right back with Tony Hepburn. You're watching The Money and Wealth Show. Polycore Gold Corp has substantial assets. Magnesium deposit, inferred 52 billion pounds. Molybdenum deposit, indicated 1.9 million tons. Inferred 1.8 million tons of 0.087% MO. Past silver producer, average 182 ounces per ton. Trading symbol, MOR. Website, mollycore.com. Or phone me, Larry Ray, at 604-531-9639. Money and Wealth Show is archived online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. We're back with Tony Hepburn. Let's talk a little bit about the HST. Uh, it, it's on every front page. Yeah. Uh, every columnist and commentator is talking about it. Uh, the proponents of HST think it's marvelous. Uh, those who uh, don't like it really don't like it uh, a, a great deal. What are your thoughts? Well, the first thing is nobody likes a tax, and I'm included in that. <laughs> of course. You stand in the street corner and say to anybody, do you want this tax? They'll say no, and, and that, that, that's easy. But when you're comparing the HST with the old system of GST plus PST, which we would go back to if we extinguish the HST, I do believe that would be a backward step. And despite the fact that my own firm has more to pay in taxes this year with the, with the HST, it certainly costs us money. I do believe for the longer term good of this province and for everyone, the HST is preferable. There are some issues with exemptions that uh, are rightly raised, uh, which, should, which have to be dealt with. But I think it's a, it's a better tax, if you can call any tax a good tax, than the old GST and PST. And it's a tax that's universally used throughout Europe at much higher rates. Double our rate in countries like Denmark and Sweden, for example. 20% in the United Kingdom. 20%? 20% just raised by Cameron in his austerity measures from 17 and a half. Uh, so it, it's not a, this isn't something that's unique. And of course, there are five provinces, including ourselves, that already have the HST, and all of them are higher than ours. Some of them have one or two better exemptions than ours. And don't misunderstand me. This tax was poorly implemented right from the start, and that is of too course. bad. Of course. Uh, will it affect uh, the way we trade, the resource sector, any of the, any of the other markets? They'd probably be in favor of it, I gather. Well, yes. I think business generally is in favor because uh, I there are certain that are not. But by and large, business, despite the fact in some cases such as my own, it, 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 it has cost us money for sure. But longer term, recognize the benefits. And I think for all industry, there are some benefits. So far as the resource sector is concerned, I mean, they're far more dependent on the price of copper and lead and zinc than any consumption tax at HST. But it's much easier when they're buying machinery and this type of stuff to have a, a harmonized tax rather than uh, GST and PST, which goes up the various levels of manufacture, for example. You, you, you talked about uh, exemptions earlier, and, and uh, we, we, I'm, a, I'm a dad of three young children. And I, I, I'll give you a great example, the, the children's clothing that previously was, was exempt yes. uh, now is not. Um, uh, are those the type of exemptions that you think the government needs to deal with regardless of whether it's the BC Liberals or the NDP or the Conservatives? Uh, the Conservatives not likely to form a government, but possibly. Um, are, are those the types of, of exemptions that you see uh, as being essential? Um, are there any others? Well, there should certainly be some fine-tuning in a lot of areas. I do believe restaurant meals was an issue, but it should be a phase. I, I was disappointed that some of these areas were, weren't phased in. I think that would have been far more palatable. But, uh, and, and in some cases, might not be a complete exemption. It may be a, a half or some, you know, some, some concessions, shall we say. But for a lot of people, remember, there are rebates. There are uh, pullbacks from uh, for, 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 so And I'm all in favor of these. And that lessens the burden on a certain of uh, lower income groups, for example. And that's an important part of the package. 
I, I recently had uh, Bill Vanderzam on to talk about the the HST, mm -hmm. and uh, of course he's uh, the leader of, of uh, those who would like to extinguish it, mm -hmm. uh, and accordingly uh, vote. Uh, uh, vote yes to to uh, to extinguish it. Uh, he he made some interesting points about it uh, being a two billion dollar transfer from corporations to individuals. That it's actually a tax that hurts um, uh, those who need the government the most, uh, rather than helps them. Uh, he mentioned haircuts and. Uh, 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 as you said, restaurant meals and 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 really a, a, a whole variety of, of different uh, services. How do you feel about that? I don't think that's fair. Uh, I mean, I think we all have to pay taxes. We have to raise money for social services, one way or the other. A consumption tax as part of the package it seems to me fair. It gives people an option: do they do this or do they do that? On small items like certain restaurant meals. Um, for some people, that's not a major issue. For others, it may be. So maybe they, if, if, if it's unaffordable, just like when prices go up, they have to perhaps eat something differently or, or whatever. And we all have to make concessions when you spend your money. And at least a consumption tax gives you the option to spend or not to spend, or what you want to spend it on. So I think it, it, in its favor, that is, a, it, you know, it'd be much nicer if we had no taxes at all. <laughs> <laughs> but we know we've got increasing social services to support and the consumption tax, one kind or another. I mean, let's face it, even if you wipe out the HSD, it's going to be GST plus PSD. And who's to know what in the future both these taxes will be levied on and what increases we may have to. And, and together they were a consumption tax anyway. They, 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 they were. And, the exact that, that's thing. right. It's not a question of extinguishing the HSD and not having to pay a consumption Absolutely. tax. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> let's take another break. We'll be right back. You're watching The Money and Wealth Show. American Manganese Inc. has a manganese deposit in Arizona. Indicated 6.7 billion pounds. Inferred 8.9 billion pounds, potentially the lowest cost producer of electrolytic manganese. American Manganese Inc. has a projected cash cost of 44 cents a pound. The metal trades near $2 a pound. Do the math. Trading symbol AMY. Visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 604 531 9639. The Money and Wealth Show is archived online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Here's your host, Alex Sakumas. Welcome back. Tell us, what advice would you give to the BC government? Again, regardless of whether it's the BC Liberals or the NDP or the Conservatives or whoever it may be, what advice would you give to them about BC's economic future? What, what, what industries do you think will thrive uh, that they should uh, watch out for? And what industries might be possibly uh, in peril uh, that they should take uh, uh, due care with? Well, industries in the past, you know, this province has been built on forestry, mining, uh, agricultural, fishing. Uh, these, these are still very important to the province, but the of goods course. and services sector, it dominates our economy now. Things like we're a transportation hub, for example. We uh, have tourism, is huge, hotels, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. There's a long list of, of, of sectors which are in the service area and the goods area. So these need encouragement. Uh, tax systems should not dull the entrepreneurial spirit or the willingness of people to work. And uh, that's where a consumption tax does, is a positive development in that area. Good advice. Thanks very much. It's been a real privilege and a, and a pleasure to, uh, to have you on the show. And uh, we appreciate it very much. Thank we'll you. We hope you'll come You're on welcome. again. You're welcome. And thank you very much for watching. Until next week, be well. The Money and Wealth Show has been brought to you by AmericanManganeseInc.com.